What's going on, everybody? Actually, I don't know if anyone's actually here yet. <laughs> All right, give me just a sec and I will get Jared here. Adjust some sound settings. Yep, you hear me? Yo, what's up, Jared? I can hear you. Uh, let me see what the chat says about the sound. If you want to say a couple things quick. Yeah, no doubt. <clears throat> happy New Year. Happy New Year, X Gold Bird. Saying uh, Happy New Year, Kaz and me. Can you guys hear Jared okay? Should I turn him up, music down, anything like that? I think I adjusted it properly. Or I lowered the music, turned you up, you know. Nice. Finally learning how to use a computer, so. Well, that's always positive. Music down a little and myself up a bit. <clears throat> Right. I always, when you have like that many things going on at the same time, music, guest, yourself, kind of hard to manage. It gets tricky. Um, turn the music down just a tiny bit more. If you guys hear any snoring in the background, that is Zeus. <laughs> he is laying on the floor in my office, and he's a snorer sometimes, which is actually pretty cute. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> What's up, DJ? All right, give people a little time to jump in here, and then we yeah, will uh, we'll dive into it. How's your day going? It's good, man. It's good. I think I've uh, been been as active as I can be lately. I was just telling you, my nanny is is out with COVID, so it's been weird trying to like you know full time dad and keep an eye on all this stuff that's going on. But right. you know, New Year, it's been doing good and. I like what I'm seeing as I've tweeted a bunch today about a variety of different things. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, man. Yeah. Adam, uh, Adam ecosystems holding up pretty well with the rest of the market pulling back here a bit. Yeah. Relative strength is crazy. Our crazy. Guy. Our beloved Juno mm. is at 13 bucks. I mean, like gives zero F's about the NASDAQ selling off horrendously, you know? None. <laughs> Not a single one. Not a and single one. It's not even ranked. That's how small it still is. So, dude, it's seriously. I gotta find. I think I sent it sent it to you, but I'll give it to share. Hold on, let me see if I can find. When did you first tell me to buy this? Like at six bucks? No, yeah, it was like it six. was like seven, maybe seven bucks. Yeah, it looks like that's kind of where it dipped down to. Um, and I was like, yeah, you should scoop this up. Now right. that could have gone the other way too, but. Absolutely. Um, it took here, me a I just, little while to. Just uh, in Telegram too, by the way. Okay, let me pull that up. That will, because like X, X Goldberg just asked, "What's the market cap, Juno?" You know, what I just sent you will be what you want to pull up. There you go. Four hundred ninety-three mil. That's right. Pretty solid. So you you want to bookmark that one? Um, okay. I will. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> Juno. And just uh, for everybody's expectations here, my son is presently asleep, so I'm on here as long as he'll let me. And then when he's off, you might, I might be like, yep, got to go. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I have been hella bullish on um, Cosmos for a while just because of IBC, okay, which is like inter-blockchain communication. Essentially, it allows for like trustless uh, moving between blockchains and and you most of the time and you and I were talking about this the other day yeah like what is what is Juno you know what is Cosmos what is you know, how does Luna fit into all this I thought Luna was its own thing and that's not uncommon because what Cosmos is doing is essentially building a massive uh network of blockchains okay that's where this thing is kind of like wait what how does this work and here I'm going to send you something else that you also should bookmark because it helps give you a good idea about this and it will help me explain why I'm so bullish on uh, Cosmos, okay? 
This looks kind of funny. And why I'm, so, why I'm so bullish on Juno, all right? So if you pull up that, and kind of zoom in on that picture, if you can. I think there's a plus on the right side there, top right. You want me to go full screen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go, perfect. All right, so this is just like a quick touch on Cosmos. Now, there are, you see Cosmos over there on the right, which Cosmos is the thing that's connected to everything else. Um, this is called mapofzones.com, guys, just so you know. Mapofzones.com. And <laughs> it shows you everything that is currently in Cosmos, everything that is connected one way or the other. And Atom is like the center point to every single one of these things. But if you were thinking about this like Ethereum, you would think of this as like, okay, Cosmos is Ethereum. And then, you know, like uh, YFI would be, you know, like the vault ecosystem. But that's like underneath Cosmos. It still operates on underneath Ethereum. And that's not really what's happening. These are all separate blockchains, guys. These are all separate blockchains. So Juno is its own chain. Cosmos is its own chain. Akash is its own chain. Terra obviously is its own chain. And there's all dApps and things underneath it, right? Um, and what makes me so bullish on Juno? Exactly right, Akorian. Cosmos is layer zero. Exactly right. Um, what makes me so bullish on Juno is Juno is effectively Fair launched Solana. So it's, you know, the development system is Rust, but it allows and is building contracts, uh, smart contracts to simultaneously execute um, functions on multiple chains at once. Okay. So on Juno, I want to sell on Cosmos. I want to stake on Terra. I want to trade through Mirror. I want to shift over to Comdex, whatever it is. And there's that's going to open up a whole different world of shit that could happen versus what we have now, where it's like, okay, well, I operate within this one little world. I want to do something else. Okay, let me hop over here. So essentially, you need to think of Juno as fair launched, which is crazy. Fair there's launch no meaning that VCs there's, that are gonna there's no VCs. Later. That's right. Yep. This was 100% fair launch to people who were staking uh, Cosmos to a validator, essentially uh, to a note, right? So that was just dropped off to uh, the people that were um, already staking Cosmos. And so it was all fairly divided. There are no VCs. The, the emissions are all going to like 40% uh, of emissions are going to come out year one. We're in the middle of year one right now. Um, so in the middle of year one on Juno right now, and at the end of year one, half of total emissions are going to be out. And so essentially you're going to get half of total supply out within the first year, which is what's happening right now. And then it's going to decrease over the following 11 years. So now is the most inflationary period that we can. APY is over a hundred percent is what according just asked. So a hundred percent APY staking on Juno. On a claim and that isn't just there to pay APY. Like it's not, that's right. The, you know. Like it's a coin that in theory we believe will go up, but also over time you can get more of it by staking on a validator node. Correct. And, and like I've just been compounding upon compounding upon compounding. And in my Telegram room, we have a node validator for Juno, for Cosmos, for Chihuahua. I mean, if he does a bunch of stuff, Highlander. And so he gives us all of the alpha on this stuff constantly, which is crazy. Uh, so and he was explaining to me Juno, and I was like, bullshit, man. There's no way that that's how that works. And you start looking into it, and you're like, oh, my God. If Juno can simultaneously execute things on multiple chains with IBC within Cosmos, that is a huge deal, man. That's a huge deal. And it's going to happen. So um, they've been testing it. There's some benchmarks coming up for the next 30, 60, 90 days. But I am so unbelievably bullish on Juno that... Like we were talking yesterday, like if Cosmos 2X is like Juno 5X or 10X or something crazy. Right. It's nuts. So Jared convinced me to buy Juno. I bought, I think around the 10 or $11 range. So it's gone yep. up a little bit, but I am like telling you guys about this as I am buying it myself. Like I didn't yeah. listen early on, probably should have listened a little earlier. Would have been. Bro, uh, I want to go back and find all the fucking. I'm oh, sorry, all the messages the I first, sent you to be like, the first you should buy this. You sent me. <laughs> we'll this is amazing if they get this right. And then here's the other thing too, just for people that are interested. Akorian oh, made a comment no. in, in it was October, in the dude. Yes, okay. yeah, that was a while ago. 
Um, so there was a dude. Um, uh, hold on one second. What was I just going to say? Um, why am I blanking on this right now? You just got me thrown off with the October <laughs> thing. Osmosis, Juno. Not true. I want you on stream. Oh, yeah, dude. Where, where's Rec Proof at anyway? Rex Proof needs to hop on stream at some point, but he's uh, he's blown me off. Uh, October, Jerry tried to sell you the top. No, October, I told him about it, and I was like, yo, you should check this out. So here's the thing. Osmo. And then he kept yeah. telling me to buy. Uh, like all the way down. Um, Osmo is like, Osmo just passed a billion dollars of liquidity for swaps, which is nuts. Um, dude, I was leading the summer really great with Juno. I'm like looking at my baby monitor. Like, he's still asleep and going back so i'm all over the place um but oh yeah here it is okay so this is the big point this is like i, I knew i was leading somewhere you want me so to i have to back to the map or the stats or anything or is yeah go back to the map the map's fine all right. uh so the, the yeah the one that shows everything so layer zero layer zero is a is a uh protocol i guess um that's going to be coming out i know the ceo uh, his name's Primo. He's like an NFT god. He's been developing stuff forever. OG dude, he's absolutely amazing. Um, I'll try to find his um, uh, his Twitter and shit. But Layer Zero is coming out this month. Okay, so Layer Zero coming out this month, and he what they're gonna be is they're gonna be the connecting uh, liquidity like exchange portal between every chain and every sex centralized exchange, right? Um. And not that long ago, Cosmos and Layer Zero came together that Layer Zero is going to be the transfer layer of IBC, which means that Cosmos and Atom are going to be on the same system that is going to have access to all the additional liquidity that is happening anywhere in this world. Okay. So if Binance says we'll get in down with Layer Zero, uh, and we can we'll, you'll, we'll let you shift in and out of our liquidity because we want to be a part of this network. Cosmos is automatically clued in because they're going to be the transfer layer for Cosmos. It was a huge announcement that no one even paid attention to. But you need to spend some time learning about layer zero. You need to make some time, um, spend some time on how that could potentially impact what goes on with Cosmos and how it connects to everything else. Like it is going to be fucking huge all right it's gonna be fucking huge I, let me find his info so i can i can chill it right now and you guys can go but i believe it's layer zero underscore labs is uh is the twitter account here i'm gonna send it to you guys all right so go check that out and then after you read about that and read the white paper which i have if you don't have it i'll ship it to you but literally it is it is like the absolute game changer for crypto um and and cosmos is on okay yeah yes yeah, so primo primordial AA. that's right um in layer zero lab so I linked it in the chat it right so now think about juno with its ability to execute smart contracts on multiple chains and then just extrapolate that forward a little bit if layer zero is connecting it to everything else and people start onboarding uh, ibc which by the way avax has been spoken about um repeatedly about potentially onboarding ibc guys potentially so like now you put avax in avalanche in ibc that's connected now you have layer zero everywhere like it, i can't even appropriately articulate what this could mean because it would be so ridiculous it is pretty exciting so i mean the hope is or the goal i guess you could call it either of those things um is that Juno is one of our bigger plays for 2022. And like I said in my tweet or in the Discord, um, my investment thesis is following, hanging on to the coattails of my smart friends and tailing their trades. So yeah, that's funny. Uh, first off, Rec Proof Jared's commentary makes me want to buy whatever he tells me. <laughs> first off, appreciate it. I have a background in sales though. So, you know, this is kind of what I'm training. <laughs> that, that said, in all seriousness, um, I've made jokes about this a lot. If you followed my stream at all, I made jokes about BiFi um, and how like essentially it put me on the map because I identified BiFi through some friends early on on Binance Smart Chain. It was a fair launch. You had to like uh, essentially yield farm it. And that was something I yield farmed to seven figures. And I have the same feeling about Juno 
as I did about BiFi, where it's like, God, if they get this narrative right, if they do this appropriately, it has seven figure upside for not a lot of money that you put in. Um, and right now, market cap was what was it, like 500? 400. 500 million? 494. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. You shouldn't right. you should need right now? For what I just explained, 500 million? Come on now. Yeah. You can buy it at Osmosis, so Osmosis Zone yeah, is osmosis where you can pick it up. Is the the way yeah. you want to buy it, and we use Kepler. That's the wallet. So instead of like MetaMask or Phantom, we use Kepler. Um, yep. And, and there are ways to get over from ERC. There's ways to get over from Solana. I did it last night. So I use Wormhole to bridge over from Solana more funds into the Cosmoverse. And after a little bit of a uh, couple of hiccups, it was super, super easy. So um, I don't really have a ton of time to walk people through that at the moment, yeah, but no, that's, that's it, all good. If, yeah. So hopefully, I don't know. I just wanted to get that across. Do your research. I, hell, if anybody on here wants to go in and look and be like, nah, Jared's full of shit. And here's why I'm here to listen for it. Right? Like, please tell me why I'm wrong because it will help save me money. But so far I've said, please tell me why I'm wrong to a bunch of really smart people. And they're like, ah, son of a bitch. I don't see where you're wrong. And I'm like, all right, well then I'm going to continue compounding. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, how about staking Jared? What's your rec there? Highlander node. If you guys want to be nice, Highlander nodes is a validator. Someone Um, did ask me like, how do you pick a node or no one that you can trust? And, Highlander Nodes is a friend of Jared's, and so that's where yeah. I am staking as well. He's a so. super good dude. He drops alpha all the time. Highlander Nodes, yeah, you got it. And, and the the thing is about uh, about you don't have to do Highlander. Like he's a sweet dude, and like you totally should because he's nice, and those people are hard to find. But it just generally, if you're looking at staking, whether it's on Cosmos, on Osmosis, and wherever it is. Just pick something outside of the top 10. I know it's going to sound weird. Don't pick a top 10 validator. Usually airdrops, they exclude the largest validators. So (laughs) I've already gotten quite a few airdrops from staking on Cosmos, from staking in Osmosis, from staking um, Juno. And like those have been worth real money. Just don't do like the largest ones. Don't do Binance. Like pick something outside the top 10 would be my advice. Too bad we're going to push Highlander nodes into the top 10. I know, I know. I mean, he do we pushed him from like literally it was my Telegram room, mm-hmm. and that was it. And now he's like twenty fifth or something. Great, I mean, maybe not quite that high, but yeah. Uh, a good question in the chat: Where do you check for airdrops on Cosmos, or like if you get one, where would you look or see? Yep, I got you. I got you. I got you. Dropping all the Cosmos Alpha, just just for just for you people. Okay, here you want me to send it to you. You want me to post it. Uh, you can send it, well, either. You can post it and send it to me on Telegram, and then I can pull it up on screen or something. There you go. Cosmos uplink at web dot app airdrops. Here it is. Uh, there you go. So you can go through and see like what you needed to be doing in order to be eligible for the airdrop. Where do you check? How do you claim it? And it goes back and shows things into the future. Like stuff is legitimately crazy. So, yeah, I mean, there's just no reason not to get involved. And, and this is my last thing on this because I know I've, I've come in being like, yo, I need to dominate this because my son is, is going to um, wake up and then who knows. But <clears throat> what I would say is that if you compare the Cosmos ecosystem with the uh, dot Polkadot ecosystem, there's not a single thing about the Polkadot ecosystem that is superior to Cosmos. OK, not one. The only thing about Polkadot is they're older. They like sold more vaporware. They have a limited universe, limited parachains. Okay. So there's a limited limitation to how large that universe can grow, at least as how it's presently constituted. Um, They could change that, I suppose. But right now, Cosmos is set up to do so much more and does everything better, has better shit that's moving. And here's the thing, guys. Cosmos has one third, one third of the market cap of Polkadot. Yeah, one that's, third. That's some BS. That will probably change in 2022. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah. So, Akorian says the creator that came from that was a co-founder of ETH. Yeah. There's like 15 co-founders of ETH. Some dude was a guy that says he was the co-founder that literally got Vitalik Coffee, man. Like that co-founder bullshit. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm not playing that game. But like, regardless, until there is a flip of Cosmos to Polkadot, that's my target. 
Well, what's your target? How, how high can this go? I don't know, man. Either it's because Dot crashes and, and, uh, and Adam holds or we just blow past them. But I'm not even thinking about selling a damn thing I have until we flip Polka Dot. Right. And at that point, hopefully Juno's at like 10 billion market cap. I mean, it would be crazy, bro. It would be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, right I mean, now? recently... Adam has been absolutely crushing it. Yeah. <laughs> like if you yeah, look at yeah. a daily chart, it's literally been up only. While the rest it of the market just kind of messes around. Over a 2x off the lows um, yep. in mid-December. Yep. So. And, you know, obviously, you know, you have your Discord. I dropped my Telegram link because people were asking about it. I don't have Discord. That's like Kaz handles Discord. I handle uh, <laughs> Telegram. All right. If you guys want to pop in, I'll I'll give my invite link to Kaz. He can show it if he wants. But mm -hmm. again, we have some really, really like it's not just Highlander. There's probably four, five, six other guys in there that are like OG uh, Cosmos guys that drop stuff all the time. So take a look. Come hang out with us if you want. Good people. I forgot to uh, renew my trading view on Black Friday and now I can't click on certain time frames. So that's how my life. Bro, started. just pay for it. I know. I, I didn't realize it until like I tried to switch to it and I was like, what the heck? Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you want to post a link in the yeah, chat? I, I can or, do it. Oh, you sent it to me. I, didn't even I sent it to you. I, I just, I just, I had to copy it anyway. So I just dropped it. But. No. So worries. that's the, the way to pop in to hang out with the crew and Highlander's in there right now talking. So if you guys want to go ask Highlander questions, like he's an absolute G. Uh, but yeah, happy to help out guys. Kaz is great. Obviously rec proof. Also great. Um, and hopefully you guys can take a look and I'm dead serious guys. If you see some reasons why, uh, people, why I'm wrong on Juno, call me out. I want to talk about it. Cause I would rather you blow me up and be like, nah, dude, you're wrong. And this is why great. Um, and I want to have that conversation. So I would never feel bad about being like you dumbass. I'd rather hear. All right. Uh, someone says, is it possible to get out of Juno slash cosmos quickly when the whole market crashes? It is, but not if you're staking. If you're staking, I believe it takes like 30 or 28 days to unstake. Correct. Right, Jared? So that is, yeah, so that's the rub, right? When you stake to a validator, you can't just like pull it out. Now, you can just play the rip, guys. You can just play the rip. Now, I'm staking a lot on almost every single thing there is in Cosmos because I am bullish about it long term. Um, and I'm willing to play through those vibes. I've also been in it for a long time. But... You know, yeah, that's the problem. You gotta have, you gotta see this and sell yourself long term. Obviously, my conviction can be great for you to do research, but you gotta buy and hold because of your conviction, okay? Because twenty eight days to unstake, you guys all know, twenty eight days might as well be ten years, yeah, uh, in crypto. Yeah, but also sometimes it's a blessing in disguise because then you can't paper hand your bags. <laughs> true, that is true. That uh, I mean, like I staked a bunch of FTT at three and four dollars and didn't like bother unstaking it until it was like in the 40s and i was like all right dude that that kind of helped so same same I, I like no joke and i remember doing it same as you and i went to go pull it out and they didn't have that like take a 10 percent penalty to unstake like you just had oh, to wait that was annoying I paid and i was it. like oh my god I and i was I just like a few days and then paid like seven percent yeah any, any yeah. tips for entering adam now uh i probably wouldn't <laughs> Well, I mean, like a leverage trade, or I don't know what. I wouldn't leverage trade here. I right. think I think we have upside to fifty-two. So yeah. we're at forty-three. That's fifty-two, and like I can send you my link to my, my chart. If, if you're looking for a leverage trade on Adam, I would probably wait for some other structure to develop, maybe a little bit of consolidation or a pullback. Um, if you're buying some just to put it into Juno or other coins immediately. Um, because that's more of a longer term play, I don't think like you could get some here. It's you're not yeah. gonna have the greatest entry, but also you gotta think about your investment horizon and if you're doing it to invest in the ecosystem and be in it for a while, uh, and it's not gonna bother you if Adam does something like this and then goes up, then I think it's okay to get a little here. I wouldn't say yeah. put your entire portfolio into Adam at 44, no. but you know, no. if you no, want so to I get say, involved in the ecosystem a little, like I don't yeah. think you don't have to completely stop or anything like that. 
it's a great time to buy spot. It's a great time to get involved. I wouldn't love trade that at all. I sent you a link that has my like Solana parabolic flip line on it for Adam, because there is another one. And I think we'll flip it eventually based on how bullish I am. Mm -hmm. um, but like Boy. it is like, <laughs> let's see if that works. Staking on Highlander nodes. That's cool. Yeah, he sent that in your, uh, what am I doing? Oh, uh, did he? Okay, yeah, look at uh, on, on Telegram, yeah. Pulling up your chart. Got it. <clears throat> so that's what we got to flip. That's what we got to flip. So th that's where the 52, 53 I was just talking about from. Like, this has been capping price going back to, you know, middle of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we're essentially about to go into price discovery, but I think 52, 53 will be tough to get over. And then when it does, I'll see you at a hundred. All right. Okay. Yeah. But it's been, I mean, it's been, we've been running while the entire market's been taking a dump. So I wouldn't go too crazy right here. Right. Yeah. If the entire market keeps dumping, then this could be pulling back to, I would say like this SR, give or take. hundred percent. But if bitcoin catches a bid here and this ends up being our bottoming structure and we start pushing up from here then i think adam is just going to be going insane for longer straight up i think is the idea straight up yeah yeah no doubt cool um uh and we've been going for a bit here my son's like staring around he hasn't like bolted out of his room yet but I don't know if there's anything else. So yeah, if about. you're just looking to buy Juno and like not hold it for super long, you don't have to stake it. And like the staking rewards are really only going to compound if you do it for a while. So if you're like, I want to be in this for two weeks, which I like, I'm not recommending that. That's not what I'm doing. But <laughs> right. if that's your idea, then don't bother staking it. Yeah, for sure. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. right? Like just play the like there's a ton of momentum right now play the swings good for you I, right. my feelings because you're making money for no? sure did you uh did you ever end up looking into links dow have you gotten a i have a little bit dude i've been so crushed with my nanny being yeah like you know god bless you she's got COVID. i'm not like mad about it right it's just like her I it's so little for me to be able to do and i'm like full-time dad you know? yeah i feel you it looks pretty it's interesting also to the NFT I saw community they, and the golf community are two very passionate communities, and so those things kind of coming together, I think, could be a could be cool. No doubt about it. I saw they raised like ten million dollars. Is that uh, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think it's a bit more than that now because I mean they had like nine thousand something supply, like three thousand of them are the global memberships. Um, not exactly 3,000, but give or take, a little less. And those minted for like 0.7 soul. And then the mm -hmm. leisure membership minted for like 0.17 soul. So like kind of a more expensive mint, you could say. But yeah. you got to raise funds for building a, or for buying a golf course. And honestly, I think it's cool Like if startups, instead of like looking for seed round investors or things like that, just like mint an NFT and get their funding from that and then like i mean if they actually can give value to people but i think we could start seeing more things like that in the in the future yeah i i think that there's a ton of value in that i also think that DAOs that are focused on acquiring real estate uh and real world assets is something that's going to happen real soon uh, -huh. uh so you're gonna see right now people are collateralizing real world assets and bringing them into yield farm which is a thing that's already happening i think we're gonna start seeing the reverse where it's like hey we're gonna buy a building uh <laughs> we're gonna raise money to do it and you are now now own a portion of this right uh, and you'll gain yields based off equity that it produces like i think we're gonna start see that going the other way and we're literally gonna start eating the entire world golf course commercial real estate residential real estate i don't know I mean, think about how many different ways you could skin this cat and, and it's it's never going to stop, which is why my thesis, which I know your thesis is probably about the same. Mm -hmm. Next 10 years is going to be crypto adoption. So we will have ups and downs, but we're never going to get nuked like we did before. Yeah, I do think that is unlikely. Yeah. Um, are we going to have a cause discord link tonight? Yeah, we probably will throw one in there. Zach says, what's your view on BTC? So Bitcoin, I mean... I feel like every, and I hate the whole like, oh, everyone thinks this narrative, but. Oh, I'm getting a visitor. 
All right. Got to go, man. Hey, See good you. talking to everybody. Thanks for everybody. Thanks for everything. Check out uh, Juno and uh, Cosmos. See you later. Talk soon, bro. Peace. Hey, everybody. Um, okay, so the thing with BTC, we're at one of those spots where it looks horrible, looks like it's about to fall off a cliff, but that's exactly what Bitcoin looked like back here. Like, I can't think of one person. Actually, there were probably a couple. But the vast majority of us, myself included, were like, all right, super obvious support, ton of lows there. We probably flush down and then get it back above it and go. Instead, never got to the low and just started pushing away. A bunch of people were sidelined. And I kind of think we're getting something similar here. And I also think sentiment is pretty similar. So I'm not going to say, oh, everyone thinks this, everyone thinks that. But it, it seems like the general sentiment is like we are about, oh my gosh, I need to do this after the stream because that's so annoying. Uh, it seems like the general sentiment is we are about to fall off a cliff. This looks so weak. We're coming for this low or at least to like take out all these. So we like have to flush and then get back above. But I really think like a lot of times Bitcoin wants to screw people. And if a lot of people are not exposed right now and start to see this ripping up 48, 49, 50, and they were hoping to get bids filled at 44, I think we could see a lot of people FOMOing in and then this continue to push up. So I wouldn't say I'm like bullish here. I'm not entering longs yet but i don't think i'm like in that same group of people that are like all right this definitely needs to roll over if it does then that's completely fine and i will look for some type of like reclaim above these lows um after we do that and it's not gonna hurt me too bad because i'm not in any longs um or whatever i mean i do hold spot but um I'm not looking to sell that anytime soon. Um, and so if this does dip down and reclaim, great. I'll look for longs there. And if we start kind of breaking out of this structure, then I will just look for longs there instead. So right now I would say I'm flat. I want to see more information. I'm willing to like long this above 47 K if that is the strength needed to prove that this is bullish um and yeah i just i guess i just don't really subscribe to the school of thought that this has to go take the lows although it does look weak it does look like we're about to roll over but usually when we think that it's kind of a bottom so that's kind of where i'm at with this whole thing where is wrecked proof he was in the chat earlier that wasn't wrecked proof streaming with me although wrecked proof did post about the stream uh which is clutch of him so shout out to wrecked proof um but if you thought the guest on the stream was wrecked proof it was actually jared yeah exactly zach Like, who, who wouldn't long something like this? If we get a big wick flush and then get back above, doesn't that just feel like it's the perfect scenario? Like, I don't know anyone who wouldn't want this to play out. And because of that, kind of think we just get something like this. But yeah, definitely shout out to Jared for the alpha on the Juno stuff. Like I purchased some Juno. I think it's a really cool idea. It has a lot of upside. Um, and I'm bullish on the Cosmos ecosystem as a whole. I just figured it would be uh, a little better to have him on here to explain some stuff because his uh, he knows a lot more about it. When will I invite or will you invite Rectproof. I have invited Rectproof to stream. 
So whenever he has some free time, he's a pretty busy dude, um, then I would be happy to have him on. Galaxy Goggles, yeah, so GG successfully migrated over to Binance Smart Chain. Um, oh, Abe, I forgot he messaged me yesterday and I forgot to respond. Oops. Um, so yeah, he hasn't come on the stream yet. That's still in the plan. I do kind of want to line up a few more guests. I think that'd be fun. And, um, I feel like it's pretty smooth with streams when we have, um, people to talk to and things like that. But back to GG, um, they migrated over to BSC to Binance Smart Chain and they are running a much more sustainable APY. Their runway is like 130 days or something like that. Um, so I'm still staking and cause typing speed 120 over under. Under? I think I got 124 last time I took a typing test. I did one on stream once, it was pretty funny. I don't know anything about Euler, Uler. I don't know what that, uh. I don't know if I would hit 124 right now, but. Yeah, I don't know. I think it would be Rexproof's first public, public appearance on a stream. I don't think he's ever doxed his voice. I've hung out with him a few times. Rexproof is the homie, but on, uh, on Twitter he hasn't. Monkey Ball Monkeys on Magic Eden. Yeah, I saw that mint. It was kind of impossible to get one, though. But, um... Looked interesting. Also, forgot to do this at the beginning. Rexproof hasn't even hopped on a voice call on his own Discord yet. Um, they're at 10 soul floor. Man, it would have been free money if you could uh, get one. But, forgot to do this at the beginning of the stream. Shout out to Magic Eden and Bybit, as always, sponsors of this of these streams. And they're the reason I can do these consistently for free. So if you want to support the streams, you can check out those links down below. Um, so with Soul, actually, hold on. I can let me turn the music up now. That too loud I'll turn it down a little more okay I think that should be a solid volume so with soul um, for the longest time we we're waiting to see if these lows would get taken they kind of got swept here but it wasn't really much of a sweep so I wasn't super interested in longing that and now we are kind of back hanging out around these lows um, if we start to push from here and get back above this weekly SR, I will be interested in something like this with a stop near those lows, roughly a three R trade. I think that would be a nice setup based on the high time frame picture. Um, and so I would definitely take something like this if the market does catch a bit of a bid. Um, that's kind of all I've got for soul. If it if it comes back down again, though, I don't think it's the end of the world. Like we do have a pretty big demand level right here. I know these lines suck, but it could easily do something like this and then get back above. And then I'd be interested in longs again if something like that happens. This long scenario right here would never trigger if we just go straight down here. Um, but I would likely try to find an entry either at this level or at this level and then my stop instead of being down here it would have to be at the lowest low of the wick that we sweep um, before going back up would kind of be the idea
Pinto, she said Soul is going to 80. I mean, if equity is kind of nuke and like we haven't really seen equities pull back much since March. So if we do get like a couple months where these retrace a bit, Bitcoin probably comes back down to like 30. And in that case, Soul might do something like this. I don't know how deep it would go. Pentoshi typically does have some pretty good macro views, but when he said that, I don't think he meant like it's happening right this second. And also, even if we do get a bounce to around 200, that doesn't rule, rule out the downside. Like in my opinion, we're kind of just in a range right now. And I'm just going to look to play this for as long as I can. Um, and if we break out above 200, I'll look for more upside. And if we start to break down here and then go below this low, then things would obviously not look so great. Soul caught COVID. Yeah, I mean, Soul was ripping so hard for a long time that it kind of makes sense that it needs to uh, chill out for a bit here. Ethereum's looking pretty solid. Oh my gosh, I gotta fix my trading view. We had this three day demand here. Um, in previous streams, we were watching this low, wanting to see that get swept. We took it out, retested it, and I've kind of been pushing away. Ethereum has been showing some good strength. I haven't really traded it because setups haven't triggered for me um but it's good to see it holding up well recently i've been focusing on other stuff than just trading because the market's just been kind of choppy if that changes then i will be back to posting more and trading like posting more trade setups and trading more myself but right now i think the higher ev has been just exploring exploring other things in crypto like diving into the atom ecosystem i've been looking into jewel i know i'm kind of late with that it's already like in the top 100 market cap not quite it's at like 105 but jewel is pretty interesting DeFi kingdoms um so i don't know it pays to be curious in this space and kind of look for things outside just Leverage trading. My estimate on Juno for the next six months, I have no idea. Jewel to flip AXS, I could see it. I just want like some kind of a pullback. <laughs> like this is absurd. It's at 101. Like, come on. Give me something. Oops. I'm kind of thinking if we get something back towards like here, then I'll look to get more into Jewel, something like that, which we've kind of done. Like this got retested, then this high got retested. So maybe it doesn't come down quite that far. But if Jewel gets back to like 16, 17, then I'll, uh, probably dive into that a little more deeply also if you guys haven't read uh ansom's newsletter his 2022 outlook it's uh it's solid i'll link it that's what kind of got me extra hyped about jewel so I would just encourage you guys to explore other things in crypto than just leverage trading. Um, there's a lot of money to make in trading in the right conditions. I mean, certain people specialize in different conditions, but when the market's in easy mode, then I think it's good to focus on a lot of trading stuff. And when it's not, position yourself with other things. Do I own any magic yet? 
Magic is on my list to do a deeper dive into. One of my friends has been shilling it to me for a couple weeks, and I was not paying close enough attention. But yeah. I don't even know what Rose is. Stop. Looks bullish, but I don't want to long anything up by all time highs. I don't know anything about HTR. Am I a Cosmos Maxi? No, I would say I'm a profit maximalist. And, uh,. I like to be a maximalist of where I think opportunities are. <laughs> I think Cosmos. Like, there's a time to be a maximalist of certain things. Not like a full on maximalist, but you know what I'm saying. Um, Adam, I mean, sorry, AVAX for longs. I would like to see it come back into here and take out those equal lows, but unless the rest of the market drops down, I don't really see that happening. Is there still opportunity with Galactic Geckos? I do think they still have upside. I think next time we get a soul, just like soul NFT hype, um, I think we will see the Geckos do well, as well as other um, Solana NFTs. But obviously it's been a, it been a bit of a slow period for them. CBS bought entire Cosmos ecosystems like a century ago. Yeah, CBS is a beast. Well played to CBS. As far as some upcoming mints I'm looking at, Quantum Traders by Yaw, or Yaw's Quantum Traders. Um, their public mint is on the 6th, and they look promising. Um, Cops Game is coming up which also seems to have a, a good amount of hype, kind of a wolf game, but on soul. Did I get whitelist? I was whitelisted because I have a boogle, like the quantum traders gave boogles white listing. However, I forgot to uh, send my wallet address in the channel in time. So I did not mint during the whitelist. But I'll probably scoop some up either on secondary or on um, the public mint or whatever. But yeah, kind of, kind of a stupid move. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I really wanted to cover today. I think those are the main things. I mean, I don't have a lot of traded setups I'm looking to take right now. The Juno explanation was earlier in the stream. So once it's over, you'll have to go back and watch that. I'm not. Jared gave a much better explanation than I could. And I will also upload this stream on YouTube um, so that you guys can rewatch it there if you'd rather do that. Um, but yeah, back to the trading side of things. I don't have a bunch of trade setups I'm looking at right now. 
market still is choppy it's just been like this for a while and we are going to go through periods of this where we focus on other things um anything to all these gambling nfts i think there's a time for them and i think that time might be approaching an end like the gambling nfts hype has been really high i don't know how much longer it can last but they have been good mints Um, I'm not certain whether or not BTC has bottomed here, but if I see some strength, I will start to look for longs. And I think that, oh my gosh, how many times am I going to do that? I know I need to renew. I've just been lazy. Um, and I think that once the market starts to... Sorry, I yawned. Once the market starts to give us a little bit more of a clear direction and not just kind of like bleeding or slow grinds, um, then these streams will have a lot more trade setups again, kind of like how we used to. Um, but for now, there just isn't as much, as many trade setups as I would like. Yeah, it is possible that that ship has sailed. Yeah, I do know about Genesis Go. They're crushing it. I didn't buy in the IDO. I probably should have put some money into it, but I think I was just being lazy. And I honestly like didn't look into it enough in time. My main indicators, I pretty much just trade price action. I think Genesis Go, I mean, they basically like build validator services and RPC servers and their coin. Um, I was reading about it yesterday. I can't remember all the details with the coin. Like I said, I mean, I didn't do, I know some people that were hyped on it. I didn't do enough due diligence myself. Yeah, shadow. Um, all right, well, I am going to continue looking into some Atom ecosystem stuff. Hope for a jewel pullback so I can start doing more DeFi Kingdom stuff. Um, but until then, kind of just waiting to see if the market resolves a little bit and gives us more of a clear direction and that we can get back into um, more frequent trading, trading content. Um, but I think that's going to do it for today's stream. I hope you guys enjoyed the little feature on Juno and I will continue to update you guys on how that is going. Um, I'm going to post a Discord link in the chat there you go there's the discord link hope you guys enjoyed the stream I will be live again on Thursday and I will be working to get Adam and Rectproof both on stream soon talk to you guys later